Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and this long overdue video on the process I used to add extra scenery to the viaduct. So as you saw teased in my previous video about my loco collection, I actually came along and added some resin to the river. I've added much more scenery and detail around the back of that scene. And then at the same time I did end up building the second baseboard, uh, but that will be for a future video. I apologise it's been so long in getting edited, it's taken me a month or two to edit this video. I actually did all this work whilst I was visiting my parents back at Christmas. So without further ado, we'll get into it. Um, you'll see me go through adding the resin, adding a few little scenic details, uh, and then we'll get on to adding some scenery towards the end. Flashback. Okay, so I don't know in what order I'm going to release these videos, but I am actually sort of halfway through building the next module. Um, but if we look back at the viaduct, which is the subject of this video, or at least this board will be the subject of today's video, um, you can see it survived well in storage. The only thing that's happened, really, is we've lost some grass over here. Not really sure how that happened. Um, so I'm, I'm slightly weary. I might put some glue over some of the static grass. But my custom um, version of Sculptor Mold has dried properly. It's rock hard. Uh, the viaduct has survived. The track didn't warp in the loft, which is a massive win. That's slightly something I was slightly concerned about. Um, stuff that's happened that will probably be covered in that video for that module. But again, I don't know which way around uh, I'm uploading them. I've actually painted all of the back and underside of this board uh, in a grey colour. And that is to protect the woodwork. Uh, and then I will be painting the back scene. But you can see here's my rough plan. Um, big power station in the background and rolling hills. The main focus though of today's video is going to be adding resin to the viaduct scene. You can see at the moment it's largely uh, black and brown, but I do want to add some different colours. I'm vaguely basing this on the River Severn, um, as this is sort of based on where I grew up uh, in large handfuls. There's obviously no huge stone viaduct uh, on across the River Severn in Colbertdale. Um, there is a brick viaduct nearby, uh, so. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. But anyway, looking at the River Severn, you can see it's quite brown, um, a little hint of green, uh, but it's definitely not black down the middle. The black just adds depth, and it's something I sprayed on um, just to finish off for the previous video. But we're going to come back now with the airbrush um, and add a few different colours. Okay, so I think I'm much happier with this. I've used a mix of browns, greens and greys, and I've got over and over it. I think that's looking good. It's going to be quite dark, um, but then the resin I'm going to put on top, I'm thinking of dyeing brown anyway, um, so it should look much better. But whilst that dries just a bit, so I can see what it looks like, I've decided to do some work up here. I've peeled off the grass, and it's revealed the uh, powder underneath. This is actually tiled grout, which looks quite effective as a little path. Um, but I may come back with some ballast just to blend it in anyway. But what I'm thinking of doing is adding, if I can get it level, some relay boxes uh, and then just on top here we'll sit the banner repeater. Now this is from Absolute Aspects. I did cave and I have bought some Absolute Aspect signals. They look really really good. Um, so I don't know if I've shown you this before in a video but there it is uh, and that's where it's going to stay uh, is roughly in that area. I can't remember how far out the wood comes here or whether we're just into foam there so I might drill down and see what's beneath it but the idea is basically you need to cut a hole big enough for this black base to go into and then underneath that sits a circuit board. Okay so I pierced some holes into the foam there and I've just glued in that relay box up on the other. I just think it looks quite nice sat on the embankment there and we've got this one in front just positioned there next to the line side. Again, I've got no clue if that's any in the right location, uh, if it needs changing. I, got, I struck lucky actually with the signal here. Um, so the circuit board's not in underneath, but you can see for now, I dug into the foam, we're actually right on the edge of the foam, which is ideal. Uh, because what it means is when I actually go to install the circuit board, which I won't be doing yet, because obviously I need the board level to work on the river, uh, but once I can turn the board on its side, I can dig out the foam underneath here and install this circuit board underneath where it needs to go. But for now, I think that's looking good. And this has been just long enough of a distraction. I think the paint has started to dry now. 
Okay, so now we're getting closer to the time to pour the resin. I'm actually quite happy with how the paint's coming out. Uh, it's nice, a greeny, browny, black colour. And of course, as I said, I'm going to try dyeing the resin this time. So I want to keep this back scene removable at least until I paint it, because um, it's going to be a damn sight easier to paint if I can pull it out. What I've done is I've taped a black bin bag. I've just taped it to the wood, and you can see down here where it meets the river should go up to the black bin bag and then I can cut away the bin bag once the resin has fully cured. Uh, coming down to the front here, I'm going to do the same trick that I've done before. Parcel tape across here with masking tape, uh, hot glue gun all around it to make sure it's sealed and then I might back it up with a piece of wood screwed on uh, just to keep it flat and level. Uh, the same goes for back here, I'm going to hot glue all along this line then I'm actually going to hot glue all along the bin bag on the other side of the back scene as well. Uh, and then the key is when I go to pour the resin, I'm going to keep that hot glue gun plugged in. And if there's any leaks that spring anywhere, you just plug it with hot glue and it saves you a lot of issues. I've also put a bit mag on the floor uh, so I don't ruin my mother's nice new art studio. Uh, so yeah, I am going to get on with hot gluing everything sealed, adding some sort of barrier on the front, and then we'll come and mix the resin. Okay, so it's now time to mix the resin. So I've got a one litre jug here, uh, this is an old one, but I would recommend using some sort of container you don't mind having to throw away at the end. Then this is the resin I bought, it was just a cheap resin from Amazon, that's all you really need. There's no need to be spending loads of money on railway specific ones. Uh, it comes with gloves and some stirrers, actually comes with some measuring pots as well. Uh, I won't be using those, I'm just going to go for go for broke and use all of the resin. Um, yeah, I can't see anywhere else that I'm going to need it for a very long time, so I might as well just use as much as I can. Uh, I've added here just some brown acrylic. I've heard artists' acrylics can actually tint resin, so I'm going to try that. I've also got a disposable fork there to help stir it a bit better. Uh, at the back there you can see I've hot glued in the bin bag with quite a lot of hot glue, uh, so hopefully that resists any leaks. We'll see though. I do have the hot glue gun on standby still, uh, already preheated and then at the front we've got the tape a bit of wood and that is nice and secure so right I'm going to pour all of each part in stir it for about five minutes uh, leave it to rest for five more minutes and then it'll be time to pour and uh, wish me luck Okay, so it's been a few days, and it's looking really good now. Um, so you can see I actually poured quite deep. I did come back with a second layer of resin. Now that's because this hasn't been completely smooth sailing. Um, the first lot I did, I had some issues over here. Uh, so I tried to rectify those and ended up creating some waves. Uh, I think the issue I had was I actually I went a bit close with the blowtorch, so I was bursting bubbles. That created some waves, so then I came back and I put ripples all over the place. And I really wasn't happy with it. <laughs> um, so then I came back and I put a second layer of resin on. Uh, tinted a slight, slightly bit more with some brown paint. And it came out really, really well. Uh, now the only issue is... I do have some dust that got in as it was drying, because I forgot to cover it up properly overnight. Um, and then also, if we look down here... You can see my little people in the boat there are having a little bit of trouble. Uh, so yeah, when I did my second resin pour, I actually managed to uh, flood the boat a little bit. Uh, basically, I, I put too much resin in the second time. Um, 
Well, it looks perfect for the rest of the river, but I kind of forgot that I didn't have much space left before that boat would be overrun. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to capitalise on it. Um, obviously, I can't rectify it without ruining the whole river. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do is probably put... I've got a Land Rover Defender, if you remember, on West Canal sidings. So I'm going to put the Land Rover down there, perhaps with a guy and some rope, uh, going to help the boat. You can see also, as I mentioned, I did have... I had a slight burn on the resin there. Uh, and I couldn't really rectify it. So what I ended up doing was I painted uh, the top of that resin to create what looks like a sandbank. And then I put a downed tree on top of it that just juts out into the river. This is quite realistic, particularly along the River Seven. You do see a lot of trees that are sort of lying in the water. And then I added a, a living tree just on top. So I'm just going to check that this resin is set and then we'll set about removing this front board here, removing that bin bag from the back and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so my next job, whether it's right or wrong, is going to be to put on the fascia board. So what I've done is I've got this plywood, I've got it machine cut so it's perfectly square. Uh, I've just levelled up the tables by shimming those ends there. And I've pinned it on, just very loosely, there's a pin in each end of each bit of wood. And then I'm going to mark it up with a pencil and cut it to shape. Okay, so as you can see, that fascia is glued and pinned in place now. It's nice and solid. So while later I've been doing other stuff, seeing family, it is New Year's after all, uh, I gave it a nice coat of matte black for wrought iron and wood from Rustins. It's looking really good. I brush painted it and then foam rolled it as well, just to neaten it up. See here, I did have to add a small extension piece uh, just because I ordered the wood slightly wrong. <laughs> but it, it looks fine now, you can't really tell. I will be doing the same over on the next module once I've actually got the scenery far enough uh, to know where I need to cut the fascia. My next task then really for, for this board, I do want to do a lot more, well, a little more scenery to finish it off. I want to add the bloke in a Land Rover rescuing the uh, people struck in, in their boat there. I'm thinking this section here is crying out for a tree um, or two, so we'll see what we can do there. And obviously I need to paint the back scene. You can see I've sketched on a little bit of back scene here, uh, just so I know what's going where. And I will try and work on painting that over the next few days. So I'll probably start that this evening. And then the final thing is, if I turn down here, um, I do have to do all the wiring. But that's going to be in conjunction with this board here. This board here is going to have the brain on for these two modules. Uh, and I'll show you what that means in the video about that module, because there's probably going to be more space for it in there. But I might briefly show you what I've done on this board. Um, in this video as well. But first, if we uh, we want to look at the scenery here, I have just been shopping with my dad. I had to buy him a birthday present, and we went to the model shop. So as well as an Airfits kit for him, I've bought all of this. So I'll get it out, and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so I do sometimes feel like this channel is becoming a little bit of an advert for Woodland Scenics, but I do like their products. Uh, so I was actually looking originally for some willow trees to go along the water's edge. Uh, but instead I found these, so we've got, they actually look more like birch trees, uh, aptly called Water's Edge. Then we've got another one, uh, exactly the same, uh, very slightly different sizes of trees, so this one is slightly bigger than this set, but again, they're from the Water's Edge series. So I'm going to put some of those along the river, I'm not sure where, and whatever else doesn't get used there can go maybe in the field over there, or over in the other bit of scenery uh, in the next module. Then I've also for the first time bought some scenic cement and scenic spray. Now this is because I've obviously had this issue with static grass peeling and I thought I could douse the area in watered down PVA but I'm not sure how that's going to look. I know this is a much thinner glue so what I'm going to do is spray it all down, uh, just lock everything in place and I can also use it to lock in the sort of foam uh, material on the trees as well. Final thing I got then, um, or the final tree sorry that I got 
is this one from Hornby. I've not actually seen a Hornby tree for a while, but they do look relatively good. I might add some scatter to to make it match the other trees, but yeah, it looks quite good. I'm thinking this is actually going to go uh, down here, somewhere behind uh, where my house is going to go, or the model of my childhood home, which is currently on the floor, but it will be about there. And then the final thing I actually did buy is some bridge wings um, to go under this girder bridge. I was going to scratch build and 3D print a lot of it, but I just really don't have the time at the moment. So I'm going to see if this can expedite and speed up the process a little bit. We'll get some more progress done uh, whilst I'm here at my parents for the next couple of days. So I think what I'm going to do is experiment with some places for these trees to go. Probably won't glue them in because um, I need to paint that back scene. So I think I might start painting the back scenes, get on with some wiring, and then we can see about some scenery uh, tomorrow. Approximately 10 hours later. Okay, so I've just roughed in a sky with a mix of sky blue and uh, just a white paint as well. So white paint all over, then a sky blue starting from the top, working your way down, blending it down so it's lighter at the bottom, darker at the top. Then I've come in and roughed in some clouds. I'll probably come back and add some more detail to these um, eventually, but for now, this will do. I think it's looking relatively good. Uh, my next trick then, I'm going to mark out again the hills. Obviously, where I've painted over it, you can't really see. And I've also got a printout of the power station. So I'm going to position that in a position that I like it, and just tape it on, and I'm going to somehow transfer that image onto the back scene, and then I'm going to try hand paint it. Uh, so yeah, and by no means am I an artist. This is just really rough work, but I think it's looking good so far. Uh, and yeah, I might even get around to painting that one at the same time. Okay, so as I said, I am by no means an artist, but I have managed to add um, some back scene. So I followed a lot of YouTube tutorials, um, how to paint skies, how to paint clouds, uh, how to paint hillsides. Um, I'll put the name of the hillsides one on here because it's actually a really good tutorial uh, for model railway back scenes and I think it looks really, really good. Um, start with some hills in the background, they're just in sky blue. Um, it's actually the same colour as the top of the sky, but by the time it's down here, it looks like distant hills. Then I use this hill effect here and then sprayed over it with some white. Uh, and then we've got a closer hill here that's slightly more colourful. The same on that side. Then I roughed in the power station and slowly added more and more colour until I was happy with it. Then once I did that, I airbrushed in some smoke coming off the top. Then finally it was time to rough in some trees um, and then start splashing about, adding lots of colour everywhere. Uh, here isn't too detailed, but I'm going to add another row of trees down here. Um, there I'm pretty much happy with how the back scene's looking. And then down here, I've kind of just roughed it in. I did spend about half an hour this morning trying to paint some trees there, and I really wasn't happy, to be honest. So I've just roughed it in. You can see where the river curves off. It looks good enough for now, and I'm just going to leave it be. And then eventually I'll come back and repaint it. So you might have noticed here as well, I've started roughing in some other stuff. Uh, the Land Rover is just sat down there, ready to, for that little scene to develop. And then I've put in the trees that I bought the other day. Uh, so at the moment, they're just placed in on their bases to see if I'm happy with them. And I think I am. I think I'm actually rather chuffed with uh, how they're looking. I did hairspray them because they were falling apart a little bit. So I hairsprayed them, put a little bit of fine leaf foliage on. Um, apologies, a little bit of fine turf uh, and just brighten them up a little bit. And then also this tree here is from the old layout. And I think it looks quite nice there, to be honest. Um, so I might glue it in place there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these things glued in and then we can finish off this scene. Okay then, so we're coming to the end of the footage I managed to record whilst I was at my parents' house. You can see in this time lapse though, uh, all I was doing is piercing holes in the foam, hot gluing in the trees, and then coming along with a hoover to clear up any foliage that had fallen off whilst doing so. If we look at this photo of the finished scene, you can see it looks quite effective. But you've got the base of the trees going into the embankment, and I've added some sea foam around the bottom just to cover up uh, any of those areas where hot glue or foam were showing. And just in the far left of the scene, you can see the small figure there glued in place. 
and he's going to be the man who I'm going to add a little bit of rope to, uh, as if he's throwing out a line to the boat that's sinking. Coming to this slightly wider shot, you can see the land driver there glued in place underneath the arches, as well as the boat out in the river. And overall, you can just see how effective this scene is coming together now. I think the fascia really does set it off, and I'm really glad that I chose to do that. Uh, and yeah, I'm really, really happy with the progress so far. And again, just zooming in on that Land Rover, I am so happy with this little scene. Uh, just the way the lighting's working, it's going really well. I will be coming back in the future and adding a lighting palmet to the top of this scene. Perhaps in my next uh, update on this scene, that might be when I add the lighting, but I'm not too sure. But you can see just there with my painted back scene, the little Land Rover, uh, I'm very, very happy with how this is coming together. The only other thing then I did to this baseboard, um, I've added the old Colestel sign to the front of it, just glued that onto the fascia, uh, and I'm thinking of adding a sign similar to this to each scene on the railway, and I think it'll look quite effective. I did also come along and finish the wiring, again most of the detail of this will be in the next video, which is going to be talking about uh, the second baseboard that I've built. Um, but if you just see here, I've got bus wires going across the layout. Um, across this baseboard, sorry, and then I've got joins at either end using my custom designed PCBs I had manufactured by PCB Way. All this wiring uh, effectively just brings power to the tracks, and then on this module itself, we've also now got power to the banner repeater signal, and you can see that lit up here. So we're coming to the end of this video and the progress I made on the viaduct scene. As I keep saying, the next video will be about the next baseboard I've built, um, basically just the woodwork construction, and then adding a little bit of the scene, and then also quite a bit, hopefully, on the wiring and the way I'm going to be running the electronics on this layout using Merg modules. Moving forward then, I've actually been doing a lot of design work recently on changing my TMD to an MPD. Uh, for those who don't know, a TMD is a traction maintenance depot, and an MPD is a motive power depot. So I decided to backdate it very slightly, but still keeping the newer diesels at one end. So the main focus of it will now be a turntable, that is scenic and an old GWR shed and this is where I'm going to stable all my steam locos and then at the other end of the scene on the left hand side of this track plan is going to be the more modern section the TMD section uh, so I think it'll be quite nice to be able to put on display both diesels and steam locos uh, and I also think this track plan is far more interesting uh, than my original TMD track plan which had 12 foot of space and really didn't achieve much interest whereas I think now um, this new track plan is going to be very very interesting to model so yeah when i next visit my parents i think my next project is going to be uh, basically what i've done today but for the next module so painting the back scene and adding all the scenery and stuff uh, and adding much more detail to the module with the model of my child at home and that little shop scene that we worked on a few videos ago but then after that i'm thinking i might actually start expanding uh, left from the viaduct and make the next scenic board before then going even further left and making the traction maintenance depot and motive power depot. Uh, I did say previously I was going to make the branch line station, uh, so if you really want to be seeing that next, uh, just let me know. But I think, I think the more likely option is actually going to be to make the TMD or MPD, um, and this will enable me to put my locos on display, as well as some of my nice weathered rolling stock, uh, in whatever flat or house I get in the future. Um, of course, I will be making the branch line station, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, but that might be moved a few years away um, because that's going to take more space to be able to run it because it will need a fill yard as well. But all of that is to come in the future and I'll explain that in much more detail in some sort of future video. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you next time. I don't know how long it will be. Um, I am very, very busy at work, hence why it's taking so long to get this video out. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.